Shalom, 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 Yashara. And that means peace to Israel. So, you know, peace to the Yasharalites worldwide. We're not lost. We just scattered at the moment. And hey to the Gentiles that are following after truth and righteousness. How y'all doing today? But anyway, y'all, thank y'all so much to all of my new subscribers and the people who are rocking with the Mocha Modesty lifestyle particular type of channel. Y'all have given me so much feedback and things that y'all wanted me to talk about and I appreciate y'all. Right now, in this video, I want to talk about how to get righteous, spiritual, marital breakthrough. That's what I want to talk about because it's so many other daughters of Zion that they're going through trying to get their marital breakthrough and they cannot seem to see why they are not getting a marital breakthrough or why it's like a repeated pattern that they have with certain people like men or even it could just even be like regular relationships that you you have with like people um i just want to explain how to get your marital breakthrough what are some signs to look for and um how do you know that you are dealing with stuff like marital delay so what to look for how to overcome it and how to ultimately get your marital breakthrough so that's what we're going to be talking about in this video now let me start with the with the preface i know it's a lot of israelites that they don't like my methods and they don't like my methods because it doesn't match the mold that they have for yasharelites right it doesn't match what the camps told them it doesn't match the stereotypes that they have in their mind right so you guys know when it comes to modesty i am going to be teaching about it in a totality the whole lifestyle totality I don't just get up here talking about modesty from a perspective of, oh, we just wear long dresses to the ground. Oh, we just, you know, we wear uh, head wraps from Taiwan and that somehow covers um, me spiritually. Like, no, you're not going to you're not going to see me doing the generic type of stuff. So first and foremost, and under and overstanding, excuse me, marital breakthrough, you must fully overstand what it is to be a modest woman modesty is fleeing vanity right the reason why you must flee vanity to get a marital breakthrough and that that touches on things totally spiritually right because the most high yah looks at your heart right but we know that your heart could be wickedly deceitful right also he's looking at things in your character right all of those things are important when it comes to um excuse me modesty and why you must flee vanity because those things contribute to marital delay and things like that because they'll introduce vanity introduces a lot of um demonic spirits to you and those spirits try to create strongholds and they try to create um marriages with you and so if they have a marriage in whatever world in, in the marine kingdom wherever they have a marriage with you at that you may not be aware of that marriage stands in the spiritual realm and can prolong you getting to your earthly husband is is everybody following along so first, let's start talking about one of the major issues. If you are a, Yashar, a Yasharelite, an Israelite, one of the major issues that we face as a community that nobody seems to talk about, right? So there's a lot of men that preach polygyny, right? We know it's in the Torah. We know that it's, it's in Torah. We know that a lot of us, if you are an Israelite, you have descended from polygyny, right? Are we all following along? The 12 tribes were started by polygyny, right? Polygamy, polygyny. It was founded by, they had more than one wife. They had concubines. They had all kinds of stuff. And while in itself, 
while certain things are allowed in Yahweh's permissive will, this stuff caused generational, uh, the stuff of polygyny has caused generational curses on the people. How do we know this? I'm going to play a clip in this video from a lady from Africa and she came from polygyny, like, right? So a lot of us today in modern times, you know, we don't come from homes like that, especially if you're in the West, right? But a lot of people, they glamorize polygamy um, and they don't talk about the dark side to it. They don't talk about how that causes certain things attached to that. Not necessarily that, but certain things attached to that causes things like polygamous spirits that you must pray against. Things like, um, I'll give you an example, right? Let's talk about our ancestor, Leah. Let's talk about my foremother, Rachel. <laughs> let's talk about um, our foremother, Leah, our ancestor, Leah. And let's talk about our grandfather, Jacob, okay? Jacob, original name, his original name was Supplanter, which everybody kind of says means trickster and that sort of thing, right? Because obviously like in the womb, he grabbed, he grabbed hold of the heel of um, Esau. And then like Esau ended up selling his birthright to grandfather Jacob. So that's why they ended up calling him a trickster. So as he goes on, you know, that riff right there developed, right? Between two brothers. Our grandfather goes on, right? So we're going to keep that in mind that Esau sold his birthright to our grandfather, Jacob. Jacob goes on and he's now at a point where he's looking for a wife. His mother, our grandmother, <laughs> sends him to our uncle Laban, right? Laban being like some of our family members are, you typically know this is one sign that you'll know that you're an Israelite is because the blessings follow you. They do not. Once Yahweh say, boom, I'm giving these blessings to these particular people, the blessings follow you. Even though you may be in trouble and even though you you may, you know, he the gifts of Yahweh are without repentance. I'm going to say it like that. So. Even when we be doing off things, we still have gifts that Yahweh has given us, right? So Jacob, how you how you pretty much know that you are uh, an Israelite is the whole time that we've been in captivity, most of the places that we live have, have reaped full benefits of our us being there. Hence why they don't want us to dip, why they don't want us want us to break up out of here, leave, and the rest of this stuff, because they know wherever we go. We are the precious uh, children of the Most High God. So wherever we go, Yahweh is going to be watching over us and there's going to be blessings there. That's why they they try so hard to get us to sin because they know that Deuteronomy 28 so good. They studied that. They studied us. They studied that. And they, they know Yahweh word does not return back void. So you do this, you're going to have blessings, you do this, other people is going to try to do stuff like, um, it's going to be curses. How do those curses come? Because while you're in the will of Yahweh, there is blessings. When you out of the will of Yahweh, there is curses. That's just how the covenant marriage works between us and the father. So other nations and people know that. So they try to pimp that. Meaning they'll try to find every way to promote sin, to get you to sin so that they can continue to reap the benefits of your blessing. It's called illegal movement or trying to, um, they're trying to use your virtue and your blessings for their own benefit. So they do that by trying to promote sin to you so that they can continue to siphon off virtue from you. Does that make, are, are we following? Okay. So with that being said, that's a sign that you are an Israelite where everywhere you go, like the most high could have you at a business and you're working at that business and you're the only reason that them lights in that business stay on, stay on because the most high wants to ensure that you continue to get a paycheck, that you continue to prosper, 
And so he'll have that business, that business prosper just so that you could get paid, right? But if the business try to turn around and play you, and let's say you leave, the blessing goes with you. Because sometimes that's how these other people, they feel. They get beside themselves. They think that the blessing is on them. No, the blessing is on the Israelites that's there. See, the people that read Deuteronomy 28, this is why they try to get you to sin. This is why they got to put pork in everything, right? Because they know how the most high y'all feel about us eating pork. They, they try to do everything to promote to you a lifestyle that's not the righteous lifestyle from Torah. So now that we have put that out there, back to Yaakov. Yaakov goes to Laban. Laban wants to, like many of our family members that we have, they want to, when they see you got the glow on you, they want to use your gift to come up. That's just how that happens. So he goes to his uncle. His uncle, you know, puts him on. And in that time period, you know, we would do agreements like, okay, you know, he, he at that point in time, Jacob, he doesn't have anything at this point. Even though he's blessed, he has the birthright, he doesn't really have much due to the beef that he had with, you know, obviously our, <laughs> our other kinfolk, Esau at the time, okay? So he's he's there at his uncle Laban's house with nothing. Laban takes full advantage of that. And he knows that Jacob is looking for a wife. So he's like, you know, I'm going to put you on, nephew. I'm going to put you on. And you know what I'm saying? I got two daughters. Boom, right? So all in that, all in that, we already have an infraction there. So if you peep the infraction, right, that has caused generational stuff, because this is stuff we have to talk about, right? So he's at his uncle's house and he's looking for a wife. Let me know what spiritual infraction that is because that causes generational curses. And we have to address this because this also causes stuff like stagnation and marital delay. You have to go back to the start even in your family, ask, start asking some of these people questions how they came to be. Your grandmama and grandfather, start asking them how they got together. Start asking your mom about your dad and how she got your dad and the rest of that stuff. You have to ask these questions because you must decipher the pattern. So we already got an infraction here. And there's been several infractions like this, um, especially if you're from the tribe of Judah, you know what Judah's daughter-in-law did because she was so fed up with Judah. You, we already know this, right? So this is something that we have to address in our people. This was an infraction, but okay. So he gets there. Laban wants to finesse Jacob to work more than his time, but he knows that Jacob is initially, he is, honey, smitten by Raquel by Rachel, right? He is smitten by our grandmother Rachel. He like, that's her. She about to be wifey. That's her. I'm gonna work for her. That's who I want, right? That's my beloved. That's who I want. I want her. I'm gonna put the work in the time in, right? Laban using Yaakov's weakness for our grandma Rachel, okay? <laughs> he finesses right so the time come he like i have i want to collect my wife i'm gonna be up out of here collect my wife rachel we we got not uncle laban laban is like i'm finna give him grandmother leah i'm gonna give him my daughter leah that's some of our grandmother leah some of our grandmother too she's a foremother leah so this this is already getting back to the polygamous um relationships about to cause problems right they cause pro a lot of people they don't talk about the spiritual implications of this stuff but this stuff really has spiritual implications due to the fact that human beings being us we are flawed we do things we sin and with us sinning there are implications from that okay like a lot of people, they paint the Torah like it's all peaches and cream and our our ancestors was just doing everything they were supposed to do. No, baby, if you look around, a lot of us is going through stuff because we have to go back and undo 
um, stuff that is in our father's foundation and our mother's foundation. That is why we are at a place currently. So just pay attention to this, right? So through this, through this, he ends up, Jake, your cold ends up getting tricked and he ends up getting grandmother Leah at this point, right? Now, mind you, this sows the seed of the spirit of resentment because he does not want Leah. He did not look upon Leah and be like, I want you, girl. He did not want her initially. And so that already sold the seed. Because this is this is what I'm talking about when I talk about polygyny. This is why I don't I'm not really an advocate for it because I know the real implications of this. Not to say that there's not people that are righteously doing it or they have a thought process where they're able to do it and it's not ratchet. But I look at the spiritual implications of what we deal with today and I deal with that deal in the facts. So the facts are spiritually a seed of resentment was sown at that very moment when Jacob was tricked by Laban. And he ended up with a woman that he did not want. So the ladies, this is this is this is a number one thing that could cause marital delay. A man resenting you and that seed of resentment. Okay. When you try to force your will or you try to make a man want you that does not want you, that causes a seed of resentment. Right? When you try to compete with other women for a man that you want, but that man don't want you. That is a seed of resentment. And then a lot of women get into this by that side chick flow and they end up having children, right? That's why I say a lot of us need to ask our mamas what they was doing when they conceived us because it is very much important how you conceive a child because when that child grows up, somebody going to pay. And the most high God say, when you do wickedness, he going to visit them generations right and he say exactly I, like i'm gonna put the scripture up he'll visit all the way up until and i'll put the scripture on a, a screen that particular generation when you when you play games with wickedness and sin okay so you're cold they call them trickster because it's very important what you name your child too they call them a trickster they looked at him and they called him a trickster with his name being your cold and then the Most High Yah eventually had to change his name to Yashara, meaning blessed prince, to put a new, bestow a new blessing upon him because you name a child in the way that they're supposed to go. You don't name a child a wicked name or anything that is going to cause them problems because life, and y'all know, is in the power of your tongue. So we see that trickster, that supplanterness. And what Laban pulled on Yakol with tricking him into marrying Leah. Now, Leah, she's having kids with him. And the Most High Yah had um, opened her womb and blessed her to be able to have sons. Because, you know, women think, oh, yeah, you know, I'm going to give him a son. He's going he gonna to love me. If I give him a son, he's going to love me. But no, because her daddy, Laban, introduced the seed of tricking somebody into being with her. It caused great a great level of resentment in Jacob toward her. He did not beloved her like that. Probably was pissed off that he had to work all that time and then got somebody he didn't really want in the first place. So he probably was real tight about that. And then, uh, you know, not to mention, of course, you know, he's going to... Men are men, okay? Let's just be honest. So he was obviously lying with her. Because she was having all these sons, but it wasn't no love in it. She wanted the love aspect of the relationship. And it caused her great sorrow. And the Most High Yah ended up blessing her with sons. Because, you know, at that time, it was an honor for you to bestow your husband with sons. Or, you know, with children, an heir, right? So, it's still an honor to this day. Like, do not get it twisted. Like, you give your man a son and you see the difference in them, Okay. You give your man children, you know, your husband children, period. But when you when the, when the son come, they be really uh, excited about that. Because it's like a mini replication of what they look like. Even though a daughter is, is the same beauty. But it's like when they see a son, it's a different experience. Okay? We just being honest. Okay? 
So she has several sons and we saw the dynamic of how Jacob even treated those children, how their mother was treated, how their, um, I believe they had like one sister, how she was treated because they were the kids that came from that mother that he resented that he really didn't want in the first place. So you saw how he was like moving, right? And then he works, works, works. He eventually gets racial. And this competitive nature between Leah, because Leah's now looking at uh, uh, envy that would have never really been there in the first place, or it could have been in there, could have been there um, if her sister would have got married. But the sister, Rachel, would have got married initially, and they would have went off somewhere else. And then Leah, Leah still would have been able to get married and the rest of that stuff too, I believe. But that their dad playing them games is what caused jealousy and envy to be introduced this is a, a thing where that people do not discuss when it comes to polygyny and they that they don't discuss the generational curses that come with that so now all of what we have we have the violation of them keeping it in in the uh in the family we have several people that are offenders of that being judah right messing with the um messing with his daughter-in-law we have <laughs> Then we have, uh, and that, like I said, that is a spiritual violation. You just have to look at things in your life, right? Do you have family members in your family that have that violation spiritually? Then you need to pray about that in your foundation. Do you have family members that have committed adultery, especially your parents? If your parents have done that, then you definitely need to go into deliverance um, for that. If you are a child of your dad or your mama playing that adultery game then and, and messing up somebody else's marriage behind that, then you definitely need to pray because those things can cause marital delay. You have to repent of the sins of your forefathers, right? Acknowledge that spiritual violation. Ask the most high to repair that, right? So, you know, you you just ask Abba Yai, Abba Yai, anything in my mother or my father's house that is preventing me from or propelling forward or any spirit from my mother and my father's house or any agreement that was made in my mother or my father's house that is not of you, father. The, any agreement of, of, you could say, of adultery, any agreement of fornication, any agreement of promiscuity that was forged in, in my foundation. Father, sever the ties with that. Destroy that by fire. That's what you ask Yahweh and you ask him to reveal to you what you need to see. So that's one major way of determining if you're dealing with marital delay, because a lot of times you see marital delay, you see patterns in the family. And a lot of people that deal with this, like I said, the lady, I'm going to play a little bit of her clip where she was talking about how, um, you know, better yet, I'm going to put the link to the video because I don't want this video to be long. But I'm going to put the link to her video where she talks about how it took her 50 years to get to marital, get her marital breakthrough because she had to learn certain things. It doesn't have to take you 50 years. You know what I'm saying? So through that, because she, like I said, I'm mentioning it because in the video, the very first thing she said was that she came from a family of polygyny. And with polygyny, there's different spirits that circulate in those type of relationships and marriages. It just is what it is, right? So you got this contention, this jealousy, and in the thing in the in the in the relationship with Rachel, Jacob, and Leah. So you got two sisters who probably irritated with each other because they like, why like I know I would have been mad with my dad if he pulled some mess like this. You gonna what? you kids sharing that please please some of us some of our brothers and sisters we can't even be around each other for that long so the fact that he arranged a marriage with the first daughter being leah because she was older and then rachel and then leah was you know trying to take shots at rachel oh you know this is why i have kids this is why you know i'm having all his sons and then rachel sitting there looking rolling at her you know rolling her eyes at her and basically saying well he loves me for real 
you never was a part of the deal. That was that is what was going on. So you have like resentment being bubbled. And then you have Rachel. Rachel is going through. She was barren at the time. And Abba Yap ended up opening up her womb. And she ended up having Yosef. And she ended up having having, excuse me, Ben Amin. So what ended up happening, right? So you got Leah over here where she is resentful because and she's she's feeling unloved sorrowful because she's in a loveless marriage with Jacob and Jacob is just he he resentful about it because he feels like he was tricked into it and then his beloved wife Rachel she ends up having two two sons um Yosef which was the favorite okay it was a lot of sons but we know Joseph was the favorite right Joseph had that coat and that anointing of many colors. And it was the foreshadowing of what was going to happen to our people. Because the many colors represented that we was going to be, you know, think about it. Joseph, they, the brothers were so, they, the polygamous relationship caused so much envy in the other brothers. They looked at Joseph and they were mad that Joseph was beloved right? He was loved because the love that was between Rachel and Jacob, right? He loves her for real. So the other brothers, they knew this. They were upset about this so much so that they sold their, they was going, yo, they was going to take Joseph out. They was going to take Joseph out. They like who he think he is walking around with this coat of many colors, you know, father favors him and all the rest of this stuff. So you have the negative aspect of even competitor, competitor, <laughs> competitiveness that happens from these polygamous marriages and relationships. Envy, strife, jealousy. And envy is real uh, dangerous because it's even to the point where somebody, it's, it's, I'll say it's the M word, the big M word, but you know, we on YouTube, so I can't say it. But it causes people to, in their heart, want to take folks out. Because it's like, jealousy is, I want what you got. And envy is, I want to get rid of you so that they could take over as you, right? And that's what happened. Like, they was just so through with how Joseph was the golden boy. He was the favorite. You know what I'm saying? Think about it. Jacob had really worked for Rachel in the first place. And then, you know, she was barren. And then eventually she gives birth to two, son, two, 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 two sons, right? So, of course, he's going to be like, yes, finally. You know what I'm saying? So, it's like the replication of that love between those two people. And then you got Leah sitting from the side like, why wasn't it her? But it was all due to the seed that was sown by, they, by, by Laban, right? all of this so joseph is the foreshadowing of that beloved relationship right think about it abaya the beloved son you know what i'm saying that relationship right joseph would go on with his anointing even though they sold him into slavery and think about how judah was the one sitting to the side judah son of leah sitting to the side wanting to get rid of joseph okay Think about our people today, how they so jealous of one another. If you, uh, you who then, you know that they so jealous of one another to the point where they even be so envious, they want to get rid of each other. I'm telling you, and I'm telling y'all this because you have to take note because all of this stuff is what causes marital delay. You have to go into your foundation and examine what has happened in your family lineage and your family line and pray against that sin and wickedness in your family line. Okay. I, I, done, I done told y'all several violations and we didn't even finish the story. So you notice Yosef being, you know, the beloved child. Um, he gets sold into slavery as our people. Okay. Royalty. Think about it. We was royalty. We get sold into slavery. And the blessing, everywhere Yosef went, the blessing just follow him, right? He He's blessed even in captivity, right? He's in captivity in, in Mizraim, right? Just like we in captivity in Mizraim right now. 
and we still see the blessings is on you know our people right so ultimately um i about y'all and like you know i'm not gonna say ultimately because he knew leah's pain leah had a pain um that a lot of women be feeling because a lot of women get into competitiveness this is another thing you don't get into the spirit of competitiveness in an unrighteous way because it it the most high does not want you to be jealous of other people right whatever abaya has for you is for you it was specifically designed for you you don't like that is a lower form of self when you are jealous like that's why it's saying the torah when i was a child i thought as a child when you become and you went i'm gonna say a man but you get the concept when you grow up when you spiritually mature you learn to not get jealous because you know that whatever Abaya has for you and the plan for your life, even if it's not, it don't look like your brother and sister's life, it's perfectly designed for you. So this is what you need to know about your marriage, right? You say this, I silence every voice that says that I will never marry. I silence every voice that says, even if I marry, I shall not experience joy. I silence you now, right? Because overstand this, that spirit of jealousy and competitiveness, right? How many times do we see this in families? How many times are we competing with our cousins, sisters? Oh, you know, your brother just graduated college. Your sister just did this. And you got sibling rivalry. See, it always go back to the foundation, right? Jacob versus Esau, competitiveness, sibling rivalry. Then you got polygyny, right? Competitiveness, jealousy, envy, strife, causing situations, right? Causing resentment, abandonment, all kind of stuff, right? Even think about with Reuben, Reuben still son of Leah, what, what he did because he was so cheesed off at how his daddy viewed his mama and about the situation that happened with their sister that the dad jacob wasn't so you know how in their mind they didn't feel like he was so proactive about i'm gonna say that but you know how about y'all have you moved different ways for different reasons but i honestly if you be real about it a woman knows when a man is not really into her and so they feel that that pain of that and that's what we saw in this whole situation about, you know, marital delay and getting your marital breakthrough. Also, ultimately, getting your marital breakthrough also, I'm going to tell y'all this. You have to go on a purification process. What does that mean? Take off all of the... If you, if you have an issue with vanity... Because I'm telling y'all, I'm a living testimony that I had a whole issue with vanity. I had an issue with these things, right? I knew that vanity was affecting me in certain areas. And I needed to purge and let that go. So Abaya, like I said, he began to remove those things so that I got rid of the false confidence in, that, in those things and my character and, and righteousness was being built in the things of Yahweh, right? And so when your character righteously is being built, Abaya will then have your husband be able to see you. But as long as you're sitting in wickedness, your righteous husband is not going to be able to see you. What's going to happen is with all that filth on you, right? Because we know that sin has a smell, okay? It, it just does. That's why Yahweh say, you know, when that when that sin and the wickedness start getting a certain way, it's, it'll, you know, it, 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 when it reaches his nostrils, you know, he about to come for you. So you have to purge. Just think about how, like, even in your, your house, right? You have to purge stuff out of your house. You have to purge stuff and toxins out of your body. So let's say if you had parents where the your parents could have been uh from an abusive relationship or they had abuse going on in front of you or they just was just very abusive toward you go and get counseling 
so that you are able to properly deal with things and you are able to deal with that spirit right you're able to um recognize honestly and even talking about that is cleansing your soul right but you don't talk about it to the point where you make yourself a victim or anything like that because that could cause stagnation too your ultimate goal is to become a victor and how you do if you're not comfortable going to a therapist but it definitely i, I feel like therapy definitely helps you can talk to Abaya about these things and ask him to heal that particular area, right? Because those things affect us as people, um, different areas, right? If you've dealt with, um, because different things affect, okay, prime example, right? If, let's say a young woman is violated in some type of way, we know, and I'm gonna say in a sensual way, okay, this is YouTube, I can't get into that that woman now has to go to Abaya to get that breach closed, right? Because the enemy comes to steal and destroy. So he don't care about the elderly. He don't care about them kids. And he definitely don't care about you as being a woman. He don't care about who you are. It's about them getting them souls. So he tries to get into your lineage any type of way that is the whole goal so with that being a goal right when that happens to young ladies you see them going in the direction of promiscuity because that seed of their innocence being stolen their virtue that entity has ran off on the plug with it but you have got to to get your breakthrough your marital breakthrough call back your virtue from the north south east and west from the waters from the rocks from under the earth wherever it is say locate me now you got to start being real warlike with the enemy it's okay to understand overstand this it's okay to know what your areas of vulnerability are and address those things with abaya right Let's say you got an attitude issue because you get that from your mama or your grandmother or your auntie. You'll see them patterns. In that, sometimes attitude problems come from the lack of patience. Ask your how to heal you in that area of character. Right? Let's say you, you struggle with self-esteem. Ask your how to help your self-esteem. While I'm at another point of talking about polygyny and how it causes things right and marital delay being one of those major points right a lot of us have dealt with stuff like you might have a step parent and you might like this is why i'm saying it's different when you talking to a therapist because this is somebody who does not know you and it's like a neutral party right but still be spiritually aware when dealing with therapists but a lot of times we go, we try to go to um, people that we know to talk about our personal business and to talk about personal things. And I would say avoid that. And the reason I'm going to say avoid that, I'm going to get back to the whole polygyny example, polygamy example. Um, a lot of us have close family members who from jealousy and strife that I would say polygamous spirits and stuff cause from those type of relationships. I'm going to use examples. Like if you have a step parent, if you have a step dad, if you have, um, let's say you could have a auntie or somebody who you, you look for things like this, right? It's generally the people that's close to you that will try to betray you a lot of the times, not in all cases, but in a lot of cases. So we kind of are very personal with the people that we tend to be close to us. And a lot of times that causes the spirit of witchcraft. And I'm going to tell you how it causes the spirit of witchcraft. Okay. We'll use the polygamous marriage situation as an example. In Africa, people still participate in that, right? Um, like I said, I don't knock people's hustle. I don't like fellas. Don't, don't be sitting here. Like I'm telling y'all don't go and do that. If that's what you, if, if the most high approves you to do that, then you do you. But I'm just telling you the spiritual implications behind some of this stuff when it's when it's wickedness going on. Okay. So you in Africa, okay, let's say it's a family and it might be like the women clearly could see it's a favorite wife, 
okay and i'll give you a movie example if y'all have seen the movie anilapo anilapo i think it's what it's called remember he had all those wives and they all the, the king had all those wives and they know he was going to the one wife bed chamber more than he was going to the other ones and they were so jealous of her they was trying to put all kind of um poisons in her food and trying to give her stuff so that she couldn't um conceive and all kind of stuff it's very witchcraft is very real okay so this is the type of stuff you got to look out for because okay you can have a stepmom a step parent right and that stepmom could be upset that you as your dad's child is even in existence because he forged that relationship with another woman right so you have to pay attention to this stuff because you'll have people praying that one of the children because the children come from that other wife do not succeed like people in their mind people always think like witches look like uh creepy people and some of them look like everyday people and they pretend to be nice. They pretend to be very religious. And them the ones you got to watch for. Right? You telling them your personal business. And everything you telling them, they going to pray. Oh, I, you know, you telling them, oh, I want to go, you know, start this business. Or you telling them, oh, I want to get this promotion. Oh, and if the, the infamous one, oh, you want to get married. And a lot of them will even try to set you up with the counterfeits. We ain't going to talk about that. We ain't even going to get into that. I'm just telling y'all because I'm y'all big sister and I'm here to put y'all up on game, okay? I may not be the conventional, stereotypical Yasharelite, but I'm going to tell y'all the real, the real over here, okay? We ain't going to get into, oh, you don't have your fringes 60 degrees to the right. We not getting into that on this channel. We get into the real deal holy field. And what it is is that you must always be vigilant. You must know as a modest woman, you must be on the on the battlefield and you must be paying attention. Okay, a lot of these women, they talk this silly nonsense. I'm teaching y'all how to be warlike because the enemy is seeking forth, going back and forth, seeking whom he may devour. And if you are able to recognize the patterns and the signs, you will be able to overcome adversities and the traps sent by the enemy and that is the road to marital breakthrough identifying the issues and wickedness and sin in your foundation repenting of these things purging yourself from the things even your, you know about yourself personally that have hurt you if you dealing with hurt release that bitterness forgiveness right all of those things are things that can hold you. This is why they, when Abba Yah tell you to forgive, he not telling you to forgive people for them. They bum, them bums is going to deal with they, what they did. Okay, they're going to deal, they're going to get dealt with. Abba Yah always makes sure he get his target when they doing wickedness. But you forgive for you so that you're not harboring bitterness and you're not in violation of the law. So Abba Yaka say, oh yeah, you know, my daughter, she done got herself together. I'm going to send her husband this way. And you don't have, see, a lot of people be trying to, in their mind, set the stage up. And they try to put limitations on how Abba Yah going to come. No, you could be at the grocery store when your husband approach you. You could be in the middle of traffic. You could be anywhere when Abba Yah send your husband. You could be sitting in your house and Abba Yah will send your husband it's that simple okay but you just have to make sure that you stay focused on yah that's the first thing because yah is going to lead and guide you he's going to reveal to you areas that you need to work on and things that you need to acknowledge that you may need to go back and repent for and then you pray to abba yah about wanting to be married don't necessarily tell your home girl don't tell your sister wife because <laughs> some of these ladies out here they 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 sharing these men and it just is girl come up out that fornication number <laughs> where, where where was i at y'all that's the video i hope y'all enjoyed these tips on how to get marital breakthrough and how to break 
marital delay so that you can ultimately get your marital breakthrough. And I will see y'all soon on the next video. It's KBC. And yeah, I'll see y'all soon.